Hi, I'm Sherry McGill, and you're watching Lessons Learned. Well, hi, welcome to Finish It Friday. Why am I sitting over here? This is the Monday quilt chat area. Well, we're going camping this weekend, so there's not going to be a Monday video, but I probably will have something for you by Wednesday next week. It won't be a chat, but it'll be something. And uh, so let's get right into what did we finish this week or any time. Um, I did a couple of blocks. Hold on, hold on. Okay, Harriet's Journey. I did these two blocks. Forgive me if I've shown you this one. I may have already shown you that somewhere along the line. This one is the newest one. And this is what I really like doing. It's just doing these individual blocks from start to finish. And I say that because I'm working on something right now. It's just kind of a, you know, project that just kind of came up. Remember I told you that I uh, won a layer cake from uh, Pat Sloan? Uh, I hope I've told you about that, <laughs> if I'm not crazy. I know I put it on Instagram, but I don't know if I've had a video about it. But I got a, um, yeah, a layer cake of her, oh, what's it called? Bird song. Bird song. And I got the one that's got the blue on it here's the color palette or the designs and I've been wanting to do something with it because it's kind of special you know to win something from from Pat Sloan and when that uh, line came out she had a, a giveaway and then she had a tour and wherever the tour stops were which were other quilt bloggers you know people who have websites um, that do the same kind of thing she does, designs and all that stuff. Um, at each of those stops, you had an opportunity to to win it. So I uh, signed up at each one of those places, and she said the one that I wanted off of was Roxanne's site, but I can't remember Roxanne's whole name to tell you where to go. But if you go on Pat Sloan's um website i think she still has the information out there about the the tour and uh, the criteria for being able to win one of those layer cakes so i won one off of roxanne's uh quilt tour stop <laughs> so it was kind of neat to you know get emails directly from pat sloan you know we corresponded a little bit and uh, I, I just kind of wanted to just jump right in and make something with that layer cake so that I can put it out there. So this is what I'm doing. First of all, it's this pattern. And this is a copy of a pattern that So Yeah Quilting sent to me when I bought a layer cake. It was just a little added bonus to the deal when you bought a layer cake one day. And if you can tell, it's called Milk Cow Kitchen by Mary Jane Moda. And I looked all over to see if I could find where you could get this pattern. Well, not all over, but I went to several places where I thought you might be able to find it. Can't find it on So Yeah. Can't find it on Moda Fabrics. Can't find it in all the places I went. But I didn't go to Fat Quarter Shop. I didn't go to Missouri quilt star but this is obviously a copy of a pattern so if you can find that and you want to make one it's those are milk cans and if you see on the bottom row it says moo on three of the cans and I'm not going to do that <laughs> um, but I like the cans I've been wanting to do a, a food jar or a milk can or something type of thing with this so this is what I did. Those are my milk cans. I'm putting together the rows right now. I'm almost done. I think I have a few more to put on this one and then um, another one row. I think I think I just have one row left. So here's the individual block. 
And the reason why I said that I enjoy doing these kinds of blocks better than this kind of block is because this is kind of a assembly line kind of thing. Now, I have been able to get it pretty well along the way done in a short amount of time. I probably worked on this maybe 24 hours and I'm already putting the rows together. And probably the hardest part is, you know, the cutting and, you know, you cut all these little pieces out first and then you just go through and, you know, tack them on to there. So it's not a hard pattern. And then they also have you, you know, just doing each one of these at a time. So you can chain piece the whole quilt. But I don't really enjoy that process that much. It's like, well, you can get a quilt done really quick, but it's a different kind of quilting. So I would say it's not my preferred kind of quilting, <laughs> but uh, I have enjoyed it somewhat. Getting it look, you know, getting to see almost the end result here in short order. So anyway, enough about that. But there were some lessons learned on this quilt. I bought, I went over to my quilt store in Louisville and I bought some fabric to do the background because I just didn't have anything, believe it or not, that would work with this. And I really liked this. On Wednesdays, that's when I was there, they have what's called a Wacky Wednesday sale. And so any of their clearance fabrics, uh, you can get by a yard, get a yard free. So um, I went in with my little baggie of, of samples of this fabric to try to find something to match. But I tell you, I think I've just got it almost too close of a match but I liked it because it was wood it kind of looked like cedar to me and I ended up getting four yards even though the pattern only called for two and a quarter because it was on sale but it's a good thing that I did because I didn't make a mistake it's just that when I got home I was like I want this all to go in the same direction and I was like that is directional. Now, not that you couldn't put it like this, which in reality, that's what's going to happen with my sashing and borders. I had it all, I was wanting it all to go across, even the sashing. But I cut all the sashing this size, and there was a ton of them because there's 35 blocks and each side of each block gets one. So 70, you had 70 of these, and I'd already cut them. I had enough fabric to recut them, but I decided not to. So lesson learned, if you're gonna do your directional fabric all the same direction, watch what you're doing, <laughs> because that didn't work out exactly right. All the rest of it's gonna be horizontal, but the sashing is gonna be, let me show you a block. The sashing is going to be, um, vertical. See? It'll be okay. It still looks kind of country and, you know, still reminds me of wood. And I was like, I wonder why nobody's bought this, because most of their clearance was like holiday fabrics. All the different holidays. They had all that. They had probably like two whole rolls of that. And then they had one small row of just any other fabric. And nothing great in there maybe I got there late I don't know but this almost an entire bolt of this was was in there and I was like I wonder why nobody's bought this this is good it's kind of neutrally it has a little bit of pizzazz to it looks like wood and I don't know I'm going for it because it goes with my stuff but then when I was got it home and I was like that's directional that's probably why people weren't buying it Anyway, it's all coming together. <laughs> there it is. So there's that. Yes, definitely prefer this kind of piecing. All right. And I'll tell you, that's about all I've gotten done this week. Uh, oh, I did get my placemats done. Hold on. This was the big thing that I wanted to show you. Let's see, the last one. Look away, anybody that don't like Longhorns. 
This was the last one I did. Hope you can see that. And then you may not have seen this one. Because I think last week I told you I had one left. I had two left. Here is some horseshoes. So yeah, got those done. Set of six. Um, I think I'm going to take some nice pictures on my table and put these up for sale on my Etsy. And I don't have anything on my Etsy right now. I mean, I think I have some panels that I was selling a while back and there might be one on there. But uh, I haven't put anything back in my Etsy for a long time. It's called Stitch Me Joy, all in one word. Stitch Me Joy. So this might be on there sooner rather than later. All right, that's all about me as far as what I got done. Let me uh, get your pictures up here, and I'll show you what everybody else has been working on or what they shared with us. We've got a, we've got three, and it's a uh, very different each one. Okay, Ernest, uh, this is a baby quilt I just completed. It has no real pattern. The butterfly is a block from the sewing loft. And he says, I re-engineered the tulips from the ones I had done. You know, the totally tulips that I did? He made them four by seven. So those are little, little tiny tulips. And he said he could share that pattern with us if, if, uh, if we wanted it. And the pinwheels and sun in the upper right corner are all from two inch half square triangles. And he said, I knew how one of the tulips, but the rest just sort of happened. It's about 40 by 46. Green flannel gingham on the back. The baby is due in December. This is her second child. And this will be a surprise. He had made one uh, for the first child. Says, uh, let's see, all the fabrics are from A Blooming Bunch by Maureen McCormick for Moda. And the binding matches the borders, and the thread for the binding is color matched too. And the quilting pattern is just a loopy meander. And I happen to know that he, he I think he put this together in maybe a week. Two weeks max. He, he works fast. He likes to get things done. So thank you, Ernest, for sharing that with us today. And then Charlotte Breckbill. She looked up a red and green quilt that her family has. She says, this quilt in my family has been in my family for several generations. It was quilted by Sarah Martin, which is the lady in the picture, in the 1850s. Originally, the colors would have been true red and green, but they have faded over the years. Yeah, I never would have guessed that that was a red and green quilt from all the fading I don't think the pattern has a name. We've never been able to find it anywhere. And by the way, I was going to look in my uh, encyclopedia of blocks on that. If I do find it in there, I'll let you know, uh, Sharla. And then it says, It spent many years folded up in the bottom of a steamer chest, wrapped in a sheet, and kept in a garage. Once my mother got it, we moved it into an acid-free box wrapped in acid-free paper and kept inside. And she said, I thought I might like to see it. And I emailed back and asked her if we could share it. And she said we could. So uh, there's a piece of history right there before your eyes. And a, and a really good picture of how much that green <laughs> and red can fade over uh, a couple hundred years. <laughs> All right, Colleen. Let's see. Okay, this is a temperature quilt. Did you all know that such a thing existed? I didn't. But it's uh, flying geese, and she did it in black there. And so she recorded the temperature, and you can see her little recordings there. The highs and the lows, I guess the lows. She said, January to June, I recorded the daily lows. From July to December, I'll switch to the daily highs. It's a commitment during the year, but a fun project. So it's an everyday sort of thing, but 
it's just a little uh, you know flying geese block so not not too hard to keep up with unless you get behind <laughs> and she has her little um, organization uh, basket there that she's she's putting them in as she goes so that is a very interesting and a very colorful I love it good job and yeah maybe later on at the end of the year you can show us the rest of it when you got all those highs on there <laughs> all right good job everybody thanks for sharing those we, everyone appreciates the pictures so much and then what else do I need to tell you um oh here's two um charm packs that I got from my club um, the Annie's Club that you can do online. This one is Ava Kate by Karina Gardner. It's Riley Blake and here are the colors. They'd make a cute market bag or just a general tote bag, wouldn't it? And this one doesn't have it on the back, but it's uh, Springbrook by Coriander of Coriander Quilts. So it's kind of like her typical grays and pastels that she does so that would make a cute springy little quilt of some kind all right oh and i got the selvage here for that fabric that i used on the sashing of the milk, milk can quilt it's called in case you need to know gentle forest by tea and sympathy for studio e fabrics so if you need to know that so yeah i'm still thinking about what to do for a sew along i think for the other half of august we're going to do a two-week um, challenge it's going to be a scrap challenge and we're going to do a table runner and i want to show you some things about that uh, next week so you should have about two weeks or so before um, a bigger sew along will come along on September 1st ish so um, still tossing some ideas around on that and yeah that's that's the story that's what I've got for you so it's kind of a a mix of finish it Friday and Monday quilt chat all in one um, one last thing uh, I did call uh, American Quilter Society today and asked about what can people who have YouTube channels do with free patterns and she advised me that as far as their free patterns go or any patterns for that matter that they show in their magazine uh, I got a contact um, name and number and email and anytime that I want to use a pattern uh, if it's one of their designers that works for American Quilter Society, they most likely will, would love for me to, to sh use and share their, their patterns. Hmm. And they said anybody else that has contributed to their magazines, they can reach out to that person or I can reach out to that person and find out if I can use their patterns. So that gave me a lot of insight. Um, even with with other entities that make patterns that uh, there's a possibility that all you need to do is ask for permission tell them what you're doing and uh, they can approve it or not so there's that so you never know till you ask and so that's what I did and that's the answer that I got all right so we're going camping not going too far away it's going to be a uh, very nice weather wise it's going to be low 80s um, or right about 80 and then 50s and 60s at night and so we decided at the last minute to take a little trip so I won't be getting back until monday so there's no way that i can make a video for you on monday probably but uh, like i say i'll talk to you at a minimum Tuesday or Wednesday about the the table runner scrap challenge all right so have a great weekend sew a little if you can find a 15 minute 20 time slot in your 
busy weekend and sew a little bit because it's good for you. All right, we'll see you soon. Bye.